Okay, let's take a look at this. This is my tapering jig for my uh, knee lathe. And uh, it eliminates having to uh, go through all the tedious adjustments that I had to go through before to get uh, everything lined up. Everything is set up a completely different way on this. And I'll show you how it's done. It's really easy in setting, uh, setting up for a taper. <coughs> and the reason why is because on the mini lathe I had to back out the whole compound slide in order to adjust it. On this here I eliminated that uh, option and I came up with this option instead to use a locking bar like this. So therefore there's no set screw that can do any kind of damage so you don't have anything that's uh, constantly uh, a positive uh, indentation or anything. It's all stays smooth so you can uh, line it up very accurately and it's just a clamping system that locks back here. So just a small turn right here, like this, in the picture, it would, it would lock that in position. And like I said, because there's no set screw, you can adjust it anywhere you want, and it'll stay in that position because there's no indentation going on here. I also make all my gibs this way here. My gibs are made like this, where they have two, uh, two edges here like this, so I can just slide it over over the dovetail like this and then just set it in. Again that gib is only aluminum and then I just set it in like that. And this and this here is just a nut that I got from uh, from the regular uh, store. But anyway this here uh, this nut has to be loose enough so I can get that to line up on the cross slide. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and put this on the on the lathe, and like I said, this whole system replaces the entire cross slide, and you'll see how that works. Okay, so I'll take out the full cross slide here. So that goes back and forth like that. It's been a long time since I've used this. <laughs> a couple of years. Slide that in there like that. Let's get this thing set up. And what I do is I take a commercial chuck and I use this as my reference. Make sure to lay this off. Okay, now, <coughs> now I've, I'll put that parallel here like this. And then I'll bring this in, bring the whole cross slide in. And then I'll swing this back and forth to get that to line up. And what I'll do is I'll put a piece of paper underneath there and a light. And then I'll be able to see the gap. Right now I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes only. But when I get off camera here, I'm going to set this up with a light and a piece of paper underneath there. And, and that will allow me to really line this up where I want it. But that's the whole gist of it right there. To be able to line it up that way there. And that's pretty close right there as it is. Okay, so I'm going to do some fine adjustment here, and then we're going to start getting this set up for uh, cutting some tapers. Now when I get it lined up where I wanted that, no more movement here. It's nice and tight against the pattern. And I move this here, and there's no movement here. It's nice and uh, square. I can now come down here, right where that there lock screw is out there, just tighten it like this. And all of the adjustments are done from on top here while I'm doing while I am uh, adjusting up here, I can also adjust down here too to 
cooperating position. And so now there's no need to pull anything back or anything and keep on rechecking. It's just a matter of getting it lined up and locking it down here. And we're ready to go. And there is the, uh, the gap. And what I'll do now is I'll put my cutter on there and I'll follow that through here and see if there's any fine adjustment that needs, needs to be done here now. And it's a matter of uh, putting the tool post on here. That drops down like that. All three goes down in there like that. It's screwed in there nice and tight. And then we'll open that here. I'll get that adjusted there. And the way this works is the uh, whole uh, the whole carriage gets locked in position and doesn't move. That gets locked in position with the two locks here, and then all of the movement is done on the jig itself. All of the movement. And uh, let me get this lined up here in the center here, someplace here. I'll put this about, uh, about right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust where I want to put the carriage so that I know where I'm going to start the taper and end the taper. But you can see what's going on here right now as I'm following this taper down through here. It looks like I have enough uh, travel here that I can lock the carriage right where it's at. About like that. So I have to lock the carriage right here. And I'll do a little bit more fine adjustment here and we'll come back. Now I can take out the uh, pattern here. I'm going to put the workpiece in. I'm going to adjust my carriage here. previously have the uh, angle set on the jig itself. I have the bit set all the way to the full depth of cut that where it's going to have to end up at. And that way there I can lock my carriage now down here. I now have a stop here to keep it from moving also. And my carriage is in position now. And all I gotta do now is back out on the cross slide here to get the bit here. And there'll be no more movement on the on the carriage, but now all the movement will be done on the jig itself in this direction. And as I turn this counterclockwise, this travels from right to left. And so what I'll do now is I'll uh, start running this here, this direction here, and then go in on my cross slide a little bit at a time and keep on going back on this way here, and we'll get that taper. What's nice about this setup also is I can also use the tailstock too to support the workpiece. If I was using my uh, compound slide, I would have to remove the tailstock completely in order to be able to get it behind in this direction. So this allows me to have good support here with this setup.
Okay, I'm going to try that. See how that works. <coughs> Try it in the micro mill, see how it works. Pops up in here. Now it's holding in there without even putting the jaw bar on. Okay, here's the jaw bar. Let's give it a try. One uh, milling operation with this now. Take the drill bit back out. And let's put an end mill cutter in here, eighth inch end mill cutter. And let's do it. 